Amen. Good morning, my friends, and welcome to Willistown United Methodist Church. It is a great day. It is the beginning of February, and so it is Communion Sunday. I'm glad to celebrate the grace and the joy that that time brings with you. Glad to celebrate worship, being back together after a little bit of inclement weather last week. Good to see everyone's faces this morning. A couple of announcements as we move further into worship. We have our blood drive coming up this Friday from 2.30 to 7.30. Are we at sellout levels yet? Not yet, but uh, so you have an opportunity to give if you so wish or to volunteer for that effort. Please contact Gil if you have interest in doing that. And since we did not meet last week, uh, it is time for noisy money this week. And you can find that container in the back of the sanctuary. Please give freely as that will go to our friends and neighbors uh, who are working in health care, providing them along with other Methodist churches in the area a cup of coffee as it's just a small gesture of thanks for they have done so much and given so much these past two years. Any further announcements we'd like to share with the body this morning? Seeing none, let us move further into worship with an opening prayer. Friends, will you please join me? 
Gracious and loving God, it is a joy to be in your house. After the events of the last two years, it is always a joy to be together, to be one in the body of Christ, and to sing your praises, hear the word, and then go out into the world to let it be proclaimed in our lives. Be with us today as we hear the word anew, hear it proclaimed, and then live as evangelists in the world today, using the gifts that you have so lovingly provided and trusting that the, the seeds that we plant will bloom in time with your good grace. We pray these things in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. And now, friends, please rise and body your spirit for our call to worship. Please join me. Come, praise the God of life. Don't keep it to yourself. We will share the word of life. In these halls, in the daily tasks, let us share this, the message. In doing so, we will praise you, Holy One. join me in our responsive reading Psalm 138 I give you thanks O Lord with my whole heart before the gods I sing your praise I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and faithfulness for you have exalted your name and your word above everything everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You strengthened my life. Can't get the page turned. All the rulers of the earth shall praise you, O Lord. For they have heard the words of your mouth. And they shall sing the ways of the Lord. For the Lord is high, but regards the lowly. Yet knows the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, 
You preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand delivers me. O Lord, fulfill your purpose for me. O Lord, may your steadfast love endure forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Pause now and breathe. Breathe in the Spirit of God who resides among us so lovingly and is willing to speak when we quiet our minds and hearts. Let us pray. O most holy and loving God, you are never far from us. You are never far. Your grace is abundant. Your care is infinite. Your love transcends our understanding. It's easy to forget these things, for we live in a world that is often based in negativity. We don't see what we want, and so it's easy to neglect that you are always there and that you give us exactly what we need. God, may a new spirit of joy overflow us today. May our hearts be filled with your goodness, and, O oh God, may we not be afraid to share that in all the ways that we can. May a simple smile convey the goodness we know is in our lives. May a positive word and a loving pat on the back demonstrate that we are better together than apart. May our words be filled with love and care that those who are truly going through dark times may know they are not alone and that through our words and deeds they may see God You give us such a great responsibility to share your word. And so, O oh God, may we seize that anew with the gifts, the joy, and the opportunities that we find before us. For the world's need is great. And we also lift up to you in prayer the needs of our neighbors near and far. We pray for this community, O oh God, of Willistown United Methodist. For all the people here, for all the people watching on YouTube, where there is just as much a part of our community. May we, may we be bound together as the body of Christ, loving and ready to follow your calling. We pray for our greater world, O oh God, for its struggles with calamities of weather, of human anger and distrust. May we be filled with your Holy Spirit. May those who have need find what they need. And may those who mourn and struggle be comforted. For we are all your people, and we all long to see your face. Show us your face anew today, O oh God, and then help us to show that joy to others in all the ways we can. As we pray in the holy name of Jesus Christ, the one who taught us to pray as one people in all times and places. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
as one united people. Let us proclaim the faith in one united voice, turning to our affirmation of faith on the hymnal, page 888. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, and then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. Amen indeed. It is a joy to be together in God's house. It is a joy to see each other's face, to sing the songs, to proclaim the word as one united people. As thanks to God, we return our tithes and our offerings. We recognize that as members of this community, we have a responsibility to support its ministries through our time, our talents, and our treasure. Let us be mindful of this as we reflect in music.
Let us pray. Great and loving God, you are with us always. You bless us in so many ways, and now, God, we return a portion of our blessing back to you. Multiply it and help us to share your great love through the gifts, the time, and the talent that you have provided. We pray these things in the holy name of Christ. Amen. Our scripture reading is from the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Let us listen to these words. Once, while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret, and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sin sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of the Lord for his people. Friends, will you please join me in prayer? Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you this day. In Christ's name, amen. I love podcasts. For those of you who don't know, podcasts are like an online radio show. You can listen whenever you want. My chosen podcasts are religious, news, history, and, as you probably know, a whole lot of sports. My favorite podcast is called Around the NFL, with four commentators that they call heroes. Their names are Dan Hanzus, Mark Sessler, Greg Rosenthal, and Chris Wessling. It's an ongoing conversation with guys who love football, sharing their passion, their perspective, and their personalities. You hear them bicker quite often, but through all things, it is clear that they love each other. Dan is the host and the consummate funny guy. Mark is well-read and thoughtful. I deeply respect the way that he can turn a phrase. Greg is the former boss who gets into trouble by being the persistent contrarian. And Chris, whom they call Wes, has deeply held convictions and is a stubborn opponent. Sure, Wes will listen and respect your opinion, but he also won't be afraid to tell you how wrong you are. And you start to share in their lives through the commentary. Things got tough for Wes a couple of years ago when he suddenly shared a throat cancer diagnosis. He was going to beat it. He stepped away from the show for a while, but as a regular listener, you'd always look 
for updates about Wes. He slowly came back and news came through the vine that Wes, the only bachelor of the show, was dating another NFL employee named Lakeisha. We heard among that commentary that it was Lakeisha who was the anchor to Wes. She made his cancer fight a little bit more bearable. And we all celebrated with Wes when he was declared cancer free. He proposed to Lakeisha and made those other three heroes his wedding party. We also celebrated with Wes anew when a few months after the wedding, Lakeisha was pregnant and their son Link was born. And what a beautiful baby Link was. All was great among the heroes. Then you notice Wes was on the podcast just a little bit less and less. He then shared the news that he was going through another bout of cancer. The 2020 season had Wes on only from time to time. A couple of days before the Super Bowl, it hit like a ton of bricks when we got the news that we lost Wes. Their Super Bowl recap episode was a lot more about their grief than it was a recap of the game. I appreciated that. It was real and where they needed to be. Then the show took a needed break. And then slowly, life for the heroes became a new normal while facing that ever empty chair. They are lifelong friends, and as the listener, they invited you into that friendship, in their joys, their sorrows, and frankly, how they tackle this new emptiness in their lives. So it may sound strange, but the heroes of around the NFL have become a part of my life. I deeply respect them. I believe in them because I have come to know them. I trust who they are and what they share. Through their show, my wife started to become a football fan when previously she thought it was foolish before. And when we got the news, we mourned Wes too. After all, our lives are a little richer when we share in each other's stuff. It's how we grow together. It's how we share the most important parts of ourselves. In other words, it might be how we share our faith. So there are several stories of Jesus calling the first disciples. This one is from Luke. Jesus meets the fisherman Simon for the first time. There are a lot of things happening in the brief span of just 11 verses. Jesus preaches to the people, a lot of people. But we don't hear from any of them. Did they understand the message? Did they appreciate it? We don't know. It frankly wasn't po the point of the passage. Yes, not the vast numbers, not the preaching. We have Simon, the fisherman, standing on the periphery. It's obvious he wasn't there for Jesus' grand teaching. He wasn't there for the word he preached. He was there minding his own business, just trying to be a fisherman. And then this interaction takes center stage. So if there's a difficult word in all of Christianity, it would be the E word, evangelism. It's almost a dirty word because of all that it implies. Go out into the world and make people believe in Jesus Christ. Share Jesus to people you don't know. I don't care how uncomfortable it makes you. Get them to accept Christ and come to church as soon as possible. In other words, be a salesperson. A results-driven salesperson. And if you don't get it right, well, then you aren't a good Christian. You are disappointing God. And all of this, frankly, 
is a bad message. It's dangerous. I don't hear any of God's love in it. It's shaming, it's not productive, it's not helpful. And it needs to stop here. After all, Jesus wasn't one for putting out ultimatums. He gave invitations and gave everyone the opportunity to accept or not. He did something different than what we call evangelism today, with all the rough things that implies. And I dare say it's about time we stop thinking of evangelism then as a bad word. We stop thinking of evangelism as something that makes us ashamed. For we can all be evangelists in a real and loving way, just like Jesus Christ. So as we said, the text does not focus on the big crowd. It focuses on the single exchange. I'm struck by Jesus' approach. He didn't put on airs. He didn't try to be someone else. There's no directives or ultimatums. There's just a request to Simon for him to use his boat. He left it open to being rejected. And another request to drop his nets down, even after a long day of fishing with no success. These were humble invitations. And when you really sit with the story, you see Jesus met Simon on Simon's own terms, one on one. He shared a boat with him. He's focused on something meaningful to Simon, namely catching fish. And in the end, Jesus' care showed Simon in the multiplying of fish that the word of life was there with him. Yes, Jesus evangelized to Simon, but Simon was no product or result. When he had begun to see the abundance of Christ, when he felt respected and seen, Simon knew God was there. He then felt open to share a deeper part of himself, knowing that he was on holy ground, and others were welcomed into the fold by that loving invitation to So like I said, we've been led down the path that results are the most important thing. But results come with a faithful process that sees God's children as God's children. Evangelism evangelism then, first and foremost, is relationship. It is connecting with others. We share the love of God through sharing our own lives. It then opens the door to transformation for others. And that's it. It's never a sales job or being someone that you are not. We are called to share the gospel by sharing how it has transformed us. How have you been transformed by the love and care of God? It is a risk to connect with others, but in due time, you are known for your strengths and for your flaws and what makes you tick. You share grace, and that makes you the messenger of the good news. After all, they say no one cares what you know until they know that you care. And so the gospel is ageless, timeless, transformative, But how we share the gospel changes with every age because how we we hear changes with every age. How we best receive a message should tell us how we best send a message. After all, we hear differently today than we did even a decade ago. We live in an age of disinformation, of fake news, of deep suspicion of new and different people, of people being treated like means to an end, and a focus on what others can get out of you. Folks are very good at sniffing out when they're being sold a bill of goods. But we don't. We share truth, 
We share love. We share the transforming power of Jesus Christ through our own stories. And we treat each other as the face of the precious God, child of God that they are. The world never leads with this message, so we must. And it's urgent. It's urgent because we don't know how many days we have to grace God's green earth. And the mission is always abundant. Urgency does not mean sharing anxiously or with bad form. The message of God's love is too important to share badly or with fear in our hearts. We are here to proclaim God is in the world, that God's goodness is great, and that God loves us more than we could ever fathom. And then we let God go to work in their stories. Jesus made the miracle happen, but then again, Jesus is Jesus. We can't do that. It may take time, but all results are God's job. We just do our part. Because in the final analysis, transformation is never a human act, but through the Holy Spirit's movement. Think about a person who shared themselves in a beautiful way that you found being a transformative piece for you. When you look at your story, I guarantee someone acted with the grace of God to plant those seeds of transformation for you. It may have been a big role, it may have been a small role, but as the body of Christ, God moves through us. So we have been shaped, guided, and directed by many people, and that rarely comes through passing conversations. It comes through ongoing friends, conversations, and camaraderie. I've been here just a smidgen over six months, but through my stories, through my successes, through my failures, you begin to know who I am. And I begin to know who you are. When I think of evangelism here at Willistown, I can't help but remember the stories I've heard about Alan Clark. He's remembered with such love. It's obvious how much he cared for the people around him. And this is exactly the kind of image I think we are meant to embody, but in our own unique ways. He knew folks, he empowered folks, he invited folks in these walls. And they listened because they knew, first and foremost, he cared for them. Now, I know no one can fill that man's shoes. You may not have the same gifts, but the intention and the process remains the same. Know and love the people around you in your own way. Folks heard what he had to say because you knew he cared. After all, if folks don't see the word of life active in our own lives, then how can they respect the message? So what I appreciate about the heroes from around the NFL is how they shared their lives without filter. Sure, they want to grow their listenership, but they do that through being themselves while respecting their listeners as fellow people, not as a product or a means to an end. In a world where everyone has their agenda, I see a faithful idea of the E word at work in them. We will not be the church. We will not evangelize by how good of salespeople we are. We give the word of life by connecting. It's the most important thing we can do and I'm tired of the assumptions that we have to share God's living word, like some cheap drive-by sales job. We attract with the love, grace, and compassion of God. Now go into the world to do that sacred task with the gifts that you have been given. 
do it your way. Thanks be to God for the privilege of sharing the gospel in the most meaningful and effective ways possible. Amen. God has transformed and is still transforming. We see God's love in so many beautiful ways. Through our interactions with saints present and saints past, we see it in the face of our friends and neighbors. And we also find it through this meal, the sacrament of Holy Communion. Today we remember that this was the final act of Jesus Christ with his disciples that proclaimed first and foremost his love for them and his remembrance of his acts of love and care, knowing that he would soon be gone from them. But it was a means of carrying forward that love for them and for all the disciples that would follow, us included. Let us take time to remember this holy meal. You all have your elements ready. We remember that on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to God, and broke it, gave us to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to all of his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. 
poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Holy God, pour out your spirit on us here and on these gifts of bread in the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. We pray all these things in the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ the one who transforms us in the world. Amen. Now, friends, I invite you to take your wafer, the bread of life, broken for you. cup, the cup of the new covenant given for you. Now let us pray. Great God, with grace and compassion, we come to your table. We expect transformation. And we know, O oh God, that you so willingly provide. May we be fed by grace at this table to be grace for others in a world that so often treats your people like objects rather than the loving people that they are. Bless our stories and bless us as we share them. That folks may hear authenticity and may open themselves to your transformation. We pray these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And now, friends, please rise and body your spirit for our final hymn.
Friends, thank you for being with us together in God's house. Thank you for joining us on YouTube, those who have chosen to join us in that way. And now, friends, receive the benediction. Go forth into the world, knowing that you have been blessed with a story of transformation in your own life. And that is ample opportunity for God to work. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen.